Any idea what this is? No? Well, this is a machine that can go places and do things that nothing else can. When this all comes together, it creates the ultimate way to fly. Of course, it's the helicopter. The most versatile flying machine ever invented. If you want the freedom of the skies, then this is the machine for you. But how does this remarkable piece of technology work? Well, I want to find out. From the people who build them, to the people who fly them. To find out what makes this technology tick, I'm at Bell Helicopter in Fort Worth, Texas. Flying in that thing is amazing. But one of the most impressive things about a chopper is its ability to take off and land virtually anywhere. No need for runways. And this beast can hover with absolute precision. Think about it for a second. That's one ton just hanging in the air, and that's a small helicopter. I mean, how does it do that? Helicopter expert Nick Lapos is the man to tell me. Uh, the secret of a helicopter, of course, is the rotor. Right. And the rotor produces lift by moving the blade around the body of the aircraft so that as the blade moves, it has velocity to create lift. The air above the aircraft is drawn downwards through the blades. Close up, you can see the blades are like miniature airplane wings. The air on top moves faster than the air underneath. And this is what creates lift. But on their own, the main rotors aren't enough. The aircraft would react to the rotors and spin in the opposite direction. And that's where the tail rotor comes in. It counters the spin and gives stability. Finally, there's a powerful engine to drive them both. Now it's time for hands-on experience. So I'm at the Bell Training Academy in Fort Worth, Texas to learn to fly. Chief Flight Instructor Marty Wright is going to teach me the basics. Before Marty lets me loose on the real thing, he's booked some simulator time. This is my chance to learn how to control lift and turn the aircraft. We engage the start. Oh, I see blades turning. The blades are going to start turning. And we're shaking. And we're shaking, just like the aircraft would. Yep. It's time to take off. Yes. For that, I need to understand the three main controls that maneuver the aircraft. So we're going to start slowly adding collective. Okay. First, the collective. It controls the angle of the main rotor blades and affects the amount of lift. Pull up, and the helicopter goes up. Push down, and the helicopter goes down. As we start coming up, we add a little left pedal. The pedals. These let you change the direction of the chopper by controlling the angle of the tail rotor blades. The left pedal makes the aircraft face left and the right makes it face right. And now we're gonna move the cyclic, just a small little amount. The cyclic, also known as the stick. This adjusts the angle of the main rotor blades in a different way so the pilot can go forward, backward, right, or left. Keep your left pedal on up, okay. relax, just. The cyclic is the hardest time. for me to get the hang of. Oh, that's all right, simulator can take it. There we go. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> yeah, so far because you're doing everything. <laughs> Start a little bit of a left hand turn. Two feet on the pedals, left hand on the collective, right hand on the cyclic, looking where I'm going and listening to Marty. Lower the nose just a little bit. That's six things at once. I haven't concentrated this hard since high school algebra, and I've still got to land the thing. Getting your pilot's license can take as long as six weeks. I wonder how my skills will stand up after just one day. All right, so. This is it, huh? This is it. This is the real deal. No more simulator. No more simulator. You can actually die this time. <laughs> All right, so hands on the controls. You can feel what's going on. Relax and let me move. Okay. There we go, and we're up. Marty is in full control until we get to the training area. There we go. And then we'll taxi on out this way, and we'll climb on out here. 
Well, that was easy enough. <laughs> with you doing it. So you literally just buzz around at wherever you want to go to. Pretty much. That's the joys of a helicopter. This sure beats traffic, I'll tell you that. It feels a lot better yeah, it does. than the actual aircraft. Marty, who's been flying for 26 years, shows me how it's done. You can do maneuvers like turning and sliding all at the same time. Total precision and coordination is needed to do tricks like these. Awesome. <laughs> it's like you're dancing. Absolutely. All right, so we've seen other professionals do it, and this man can clearly do anything he wants with a helicopter. Now I'm going to give it a try and see if I can, well, if I can even get it off the ground. Marty, what do you think? Oh, well, let's give it a try. All right. Okay. You're on the controls. On the controls. Okay, let me control the collective and the cyclic here. You work on the pedals. Okay. Work your pedals. A little left, a little right. Get a feel for it. The simple stuff I can manage. Now, I've got the pedals back. Okay. So you're going to play with the collective now. Just a touch and we start climbing. Collective. Up, down. Seems easy enough. You're doing pretty good with that collective, alright? I've got the collective back. Okay. Now you're going to take the cyclic with your right hand. Okay. Right. right now, very small inputs, and you can see there we go. Oh, you're back. Okay, okay. I have the controls. Okay, okay, okay. and okay. we'll go back to center with it there. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, you have the cyclic. Back. No, left, right. There you go. Up. Oh, take it out. Take it out. You don't take... want it to move that far. Oh, you got it. You got it. You got it. Okay. Yeah, that's that's okay. okay. This is tough. The cyclic thing is very tough. I can see how quickly a helicopter can get out of control. Marty takes it up a notch. So now, let's let's try to add a couple of things together here. Okay? <laughs> yeah, because the cyclic went so well. <laughs> put, your, put your feet on the pedals. All right, now, you ready for the whole ball of wax? <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> hold on. All right, all right, here we go. It's all about this hand right here. This is the cyclic hand. You ready? I am ready. Okay, you have the controls. Okay. A little forward. Uh, okay, okay. Come on, bring it back. Bring it back. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. Happy meeting. <laughs> so let me guess, we're no longer in... <laughs> I have the controls. I'm no good. I'm no good, Marty. I'm no good. I'm doing my best, but I'm not any good. <laughs> lesson over. In my last flying lesson, I'm going to learn what to do when the engine fails mid-flight. I hope I don't get sick. Hello everyone. Did you know that there's a YouTube channel that can help you to become a scientist and engineer? If you want to know more about science, did you want to become a great researcher, doctor, scientist, engineer? Then go and subscribe to Science Secret TV on YouTube. This channel can help you achieve success about science and scientists. This channel deals with animals documentary, scientists and research, invention of technology. We deal with most powerful countries and their scientist secrets. Chief Pilot is going to take me through a procedure called auto rotation. So now this auto rotation thing, this is literally we're going to be hundreds of feet in the air and you're going to shut off the engine, correct? That's what we're going to do. So, now, and what is the reason for learning this? This is a single-engine aircraft, and as reliable as its engines are, there's still going to be the time when the engine does fail. You need to be able to land that aircraft safely and confidently and not have any problems. Here's the point of no return. I'm beginning to wish this show was about pickup trucks. Auto rotation. This is going to be fun. You're going to like this. I'm ready. And the engine quit just like that. I'll lower the collective down. Okay. We fall at a stomach churning 50 feet a second. With no engine power, the blades are now being driven just by the air rushing through them. Ooh. About 50 feet, I go into a nice deep cell. A little bit of cushion. Than I thought, but 
Not too bad. I mean, that is amazing. All right, so now I noticed right there before we actually hit the ground, you really pulled up on the helicopter and kind of like it went straight up. What's the reason for that? At about 50 feet off the ground, I brought the nose up and that brings the rotor up into the airstream. It helps break it and slow the aircraft down and then you touch down gently. Now, what would have happened if you would have not done that? If you don't do that, you fall pretty rapid. Like a rock. Yeah. Awesome.